Welcome back, friends. So this is a little different. The picture you saw when you clicked on the video is similar to this, but different. Um, I'm going to walk you through the initial intuitive stage that will get you these little sand dollars, the sea background, this little school of fish, and then this yellow fish. And then from there, I'll have a speed it up time lapse section. So here it's a lot of just patterns and dots and line work that create the visual interest that make it look under the sea. And all of that is very easy and you can totally do it on your own. I invite you to, you know, continue watching after the part where we're done. Um, it's sped up, so it's super quick, but I wanted you to know that you can take any of these and keep going after we're done and just build out with patterns, lines, color, and so the colors that we used for this are yellow ochre, black, gray, white. You use the titanium white. You'll see this one is fairly translucent. You can see the little black lines underneath it that tells you it's translucency. We have um, turquoise, teal, the, I think the gray blue is what I used in this. And then I also used this uh, amethyst matte acrylic with some of this magenta, I believe, to make these purple colors. And sap green, of course. This one has a lot of different colors in it, so I'm sorry about that. Feel free to kind of um, blend some that are already there to make a third color if that works for you. I don't want you to have to invest in a ton of new colors or anything. As always, we're using the same brushes here. Half inch flat, quarter inch flat. They're both angle brushes. And then my little pointer guy. And I don't believe we used my fan brush in this. So yeah, um, join me. All right, today we are going to start an intuitive piece. I'm gonna try doing it step by step so you can work through it with me. However, we'll still have to have breaks to let the paint dry because this is the kind of process that you really have to have a fully dry layer as you go. So we can't really do it all in one. But hopefully this will give you a way to work through it with me so you can understand the process better and then really make it make it yourself and make it your own but then be able to expand from there and really delve into it when you feel comfortable with intuitive painting right now i'm just putting some water on the canvas is there's no concept of success there's no finished product that you have in mind so you're not working towards anything. And since you're not working towards anything, you just get to enjoy what you're doing. So I put down that water, and what that does is it helps it, the color bleed. So when you have a very liquidy, fluid paint like this, you can just barely touch some of those spots with water. And it will help Of course, it's not doing what I want it to do when I tell you about it. Um, yeah, anyway, so we made these little moves here too. That's probably not very easy to follow. I got all distracted telling you about water. So we'll just make this a triangle. I brought in some of this light blue and that's what I put over here. But really, we can just divide it in half like that. And I'm spreading out all of the teal. And what I'm doing right here is I'm just picking up, it's a very watery part of the canvas. So I'm just soaking the brush in that watery part and bringing it over here. So I'm able to, well, it helps it dry faster because it's not as, as damp, but then also, 
it helps move the color around so you get, um, you know, a good layer of covering across the whole thing. These first few layers that we're going to do are honestly just about making a background. It, it, we're just putting shapes out there without any intention of what they <laughs> could look like or would be. So bring in some blue and we'll make a little square around that little square that came out there. And I have the yellow ochre that I like. So when you have two wet paints, if you leave this area of dry canvas between them, they won't touch each other and so the color won't, won't mix. But when you touch them, and connect the two wet colors, they'll bleed together. And you can have them touch or not touch. That's entirely up to you. But now you know the different ways it could affect it. I'm just pulling some of this down to blend the colors a little bit. We're just making this sort of, I don't know, yellow, yellow bit. I have this tan. We're gonna make this triangle. And then what I'm gonna do is turn it, and this is still a little damp. And I'm going to bring in some of that tan here. Just paint a little, little section there. I just kind of divided it in half with, with the tan. And it's actually mixing the paint on the canvas. So if I wanted to add in more of the tan, it would lighten this. Or I could pull in more blue. All right, let's do some yellow. I'll just do some use, use, loops. Is that a parabola? I don't remember my math. I'm kind of cleaning up the lines here, but you don't have to do that. You can leave the lines just how they are. You can let it be messy, that's totally fine. You do what works for you. None of this is wrong. <laughs> We're not trying to make anything. So, ah. so we can do whatever we want. Okay. Right, let's put another U here. But this time I'll color the inside of it. You may hear my puppy's feet in the background or his jingle. I'm sorry if that's distracting. Ooh. I flew some paint right there. Hey, no worries. Just blend it in. If you didn't want paint there, don't put it there. I just put it there because life put it there. So my brush is just wet. I still had a lot of pigment in it from when I was coloring this in. So again, it's that same thing of just moving, moving paint that's already on the canvas to different places.
And so the first layer, the whole point of it is to cover the canvas. You just need to cover it. If you want to keep playing, I have some teal here. You can bring it in and you can keep playing. You don't have to stop with the layer just because it's covered, but you can. And then we're just going to throw in some drips because I just like them. <laughs> I think they make really fun lines. There we go. And then I like to shift the canvas sometimes. You can even throw extra paint. I added a little bit of black in there. So yeah, that's what we have now. So I'm going to now take a break. I'm gonna let this dry completely. And then we will revisit it. All right, so we are at the point with this one where it isn't completely dry. If you take a look, you can see the parts, there we go, that reflect light. Those are the parts that are still wet. And so what you can do at this point, if you want, you can go over it and mess it up. <laughs> but this is what I wanted to show you. When you get it wet and then you lift out the color, you get these really neat markings. Or you can also, depending on, oop. <laughs> no, if you don't do that, or do it, it doesn't matter. There we go, that looks better. I'm not sure what I expected to happen. There we go. All right, so that gave us some other interesting textures just from using the, the wet and the dry together. So at that point, it's now pretty much dry. So I'm bringing in some tan and I'm just starting at this bottom side of this, I don't know, sun, yellow ball. And I'm just bringing it down here. Using some teal and I'm just going over some of the parts that had been bluish teal before just to add a little more color variation so my brush is now dry I mean it's still down from the water but essentially dry and when you go in with that kind of brush, it can give you these neat um it's hard to see. Oh, that's better. This, so that's dry brush technique. So it gives you a much different uh look on the canvas than when you take just, you know. Here's a big thing of paint, so. I brought in some tan there. And I'm just making some lines. Bring in some of the yellow. It 
this yellow is a pretty translucent color. So you can see how the white lines are still visible underneath it. To bring in a little bit of black here and I'm just doing some designs. When you move the brush in kind of twirly shapes like that, it can give you different sh line shapes and variation just in the line form itself, which can be fun. Or you can just pick one direction and keep all your lines consistent. This blue was a little, um, was a little damp still, so I was able to just blend some of that black in there and let that kind of be a thing. I'm going to pull in a little more of that blue. And I'm intentionally mixing this with the black of the lines. So again, it gives me some of that kind of a gray, a slate, a slate blue gray sort of a color. And make some of those things. Who knows why? All right, I think that we are at a point where this would be good to let dry again. So I'm gonna set it, set it aside. Okay, so we're back and this one is dry for the most part. So my brush is fairly damp and I'm bringing in some, it's Titian Pale Green and I'm just going to add some lines. At this point, I would start looking around for something. So checking the different angles and how different layers of line meet up. And just see if something kind of pops out and makes sense. If something looks kind of like roots, I can develop that. Maybe it will look like butterfly wings, you can develop that. The whole thing is just to relax and know that there's no way to do it wrong. So just enjoy yourself. I'm wearing a sweater I kind of like that doesn't have paint on it, didn't have paint on it. And I told myself I could do this. I could paint and not get paint on my sweater, like an adult, but I still got paint on my sweater. All right, we're adding some fun lines. There, that's some interesting chaos that we've just added. I'm adding in some titanium white. And again, I'm just letting it mix on the canvas itself with the paint that's already there. And 
as you can see, that little bit of yellow had not completely dried. I can be impatient when I'm waiting for things to, to dry. That's not a good habit. Don't be like me. So again, this doesn't look really like anything to me yet. So I'm still just filling things in, playing around with the color. This has kind of a fun ocean feel to it that I'm liking. But I'm not quite sure where to take it. This white is fairly translucent, you can see. It almost looks chalky a bit. That's not a good or bad thing. It's just something you might notice as you're working with different paints that some will be very thick. Um, you know, some will be super dark or opaque. Some will be crazy translucent to the point that it's almost annoying. All right, I'm bringing in to the teal. Sap green. Some of these areas in the black here. And again, it has that translucency. And that's a little bit of the light blue that's opaque in there. And all I'm doing here is bringing in some of that blue, which automatically blends with the green that's already on the canvas and then bring down the little straight lines. And that gives you some interesting texture. So I'm bringing in more of the tan color. I'm just kind of <laughs> hanging out, doing that. So this is the liquidy teal. I think it's fluid, I think is what they call it. And some water there. And these tan lines are still wet paint. So I'm just mixing the teal in too. Bringing in a little bit of teal, again with just a little, almost stamping it kind of.
So I'm mixing the tan and the green and some white. And that kind of gives me the intentional version of this color. And I'm just going over it. I'm just going over it with a bit of, bit of water. I find that having those various layers of um, pigment, translucency, color variation that's under the surface really enriches the kind of overall feel of the piece, even though it's just all accidents. I don't know what it's, I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, so I just threw some sap green in here. Take this white and make a circle, little circle. So they're just Again, just blending in the paint so it recedes with the rest of the color that that was either down there initially or it sort of fades into the background. And this whole time I'm just letting the colors mix how they mix because it doesn't matter, it's fine. As long as you're aware of what color palette you're using, your colors will mix, but it'll never get like super muddy or dull just because you're, you're sticking with, you know, colors that are friends. So I have the point, the little point brush, and what I'm doing with this, getting off a little bit of the excess water, but also I'm taking some of the teal, and I'm just going to add little circles. And because I have that, they're being drawn in an area that's fairly dry, but it's touching two sides that are wet, it gives me that fun bleeding together of colors. This is the smaller, about a quarter inch, angled flat brush. So I'm picking up some of the white, and again, you want it to be dry enough that it doesn't just drip down and plop onto, <laughs> onto the canvas. And I'm just making those little leafy shapes that I make a lot. And then this one. So 
So what I'm going for here is just little sand dollar kind of shell shapes. That's fun. So now I have the really liquidy black on my thin brush. Oh, that was wet there. I did not know that. Uh, and I'm just taking it up. With some curlies. And if your canvas is wet, you'll get these kind of curlies. We will add just some little lines there. I'm bringing in more of the turquoise. And again, mixing it with what's there. And then I closed that off. I closed it off as in from this previous line. Now I'm just adding teal. And I can mess around with this craziness. This thing that I'm trying to make a tail is annoying me. So I am the the closest thing you can do to erasing in painting, which is get it fairly wet and then dab up what you can with paper towel. Alright. I wasn't I wasn't liking how that was blending anymore. 
and so I made the intentional choice to change it. Which I'm also allowed to do. See, painting's great. So I'm trying to make this little fish silhouette. And you can make it wherever you want. I made it here because I already had that kind of bulb. But that's the only reason that I turned that part into a fish. If you had a shape that seems more fishy somewhere else, if you have a shape, you know, that looks like anything but you want to, to develop, you know, go for it. So this is turquoise. And... I'm just letting these colors merge a bit. And I'm just playing with that same trick of mixing thicker wet paint. Again, it's that trick of mixing the thicker wet paint with the really really saturated canvas. This just gives us more implied wave shapes. And we're getting close. So I'm taking my black, and this is dry. So, you know what would be way easier? Let's do this the easy way. Take the end. Dip it in your black, dip it on your canvas. There you go, way better. You can also use the same thing for little circles. And all I'm doing right now is trying to fill out the idea that this is underwater. So to do that, I don't even have to really build actual coral or other, you know, other sea creatures or anything. You can just imply, you know, undersea life. So I'm just pulling down with my thin, my thin brush. Pulling down parts of these different little circles. Another way to make implied sort of vegetation or, you know, something scenic in the background ish is again just using those little dollops, but in, you know, um, varying size and how, they're, how they relate to each other. Put something like that in the background here. I'm just going to add a few little touches and then 
I'm gonna call it done. So first, again with my thin brush, I'm going to, whoop, I'm just gonna add little tails on some of these guys. Just a little underbelly and a tail. And that's my little school of fish. And you can fully develop all of them. You know, you can just do some of them here and there with, with the whole shape. See, I'm gonna leave it with just some of them. I like when visuals fade in and out like that. And this is with just a little point of black. All right, so there we go. That's it. We just made this little under the sea thing. So at this point, I'm just playing. I'm filling in some background, uh, emphasizing some different shapes. You'll find that if you add just a little bit of color on the edges of some things, it can help accentuate it a little bit. The little dots are great for making undersea sponges and stuff like that. It's also useful to use the negative space. So if you want to create a shape, you can color the outline of what that shape would be and use implied line in that sort of way, like right here. Ultimately, you can do whatever works for you. I really do view this part as play, especially with something under C. A lot of just squiggly lines, curvy shapes, dots. Underwater tends to be very organic and flowy, so the more that you keep things organic and flowy, it will fit with the visual of underwater. You'll see I did add in a hint of magenta here. Not here, but in general. These are little baby fish. I'm just emphasizing the sand dollars to accentuate them a little more. Some fun curvies. This is the magenta I mentioned. More dots. It helps make highlights. And yeah, just Fill in what you want and have fun. It can seem intimidating when you see it all very quickly like this, but really it was just me relaxing for a while and not really thinking too hard and just filling in stuff with various patterns. Enjoy.